Hi, welcome to the DRH show where I have wide ranging conversations with interesting people. We talk about all things psychology, mental health and wellness. Now, you might not be aware, but this is the 100th episode of the DRH show. Since I launched this in December 2019, I've been talking to people from all sorts of background within psychology, within mental health and wellness. Some of them are mental health professionals and some of them are experts by experience. But um, until now, you haven't met the Psychreg team and you've heard it right. Um, there's actually um, a small team which helps me run um, Psychreg on a daily basis. So it's not just my face um, behind Psychreg. And I think this is the perfect opportunity since this is the 100th episode of the DRH show for you to get to know um, the team behind Psychreg. So um, joining me today uh, are the small team behind Psychreg. So um, we have Dina. Um, we have um, Graham, we have Rona, and then lastly, we have Sue. So thanks everyone for joining me. Um, I'll give them a chance to um, share to you what they actually do for Sightbridge and how these actually reflect um, their own personal values and what we're trying to achieve in Sightbridge. So um, let's first hear it from Dina. Um, could you just tell us um, your journey about Cypress and what exactly is it that you do um, for Cypress? Uh, hello, I am Dina. I actually do social media management. I promote Cypress on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So that's what I basically do here. Mm -hmm. and, and how are you finding it so far with, with managing social media? Even before you joined Cypress, have you always been kind of like a social savvy kind of person? I, I would imagine, because um, Dina, um, it, it's not really a secret. Um, Dina is my younger sister. Um, um, she's, she's a teacher in the Philippines, so she's, she's teaching a lot of um, young people. So would you say that because of your interaction with young people, you kind of like um, social media serving? Yes, I do. I am actually active on different social media sites. Mm -hmm. And I think it is the best way to promote the website, especially here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Most of the people are actually spend most of their time on their cell phone. So that's why we do the promotion of website via social media sites. Yes, I, I agree with Dina because actually a great number of our traffic actually comes from, from social media, specifically on Facebook. Um, if any one of you is aware about similar web, um, it's actually a website where you can gauge how much traffic a website is getting. And you can see that most of our readers are from the Philippines and they get um, Cycredge um, and Cycredge content from Facebook. So we'll talk more about that later. And now um, we'll move on to Graham. So Graham, um, I know people would also know you because um, even before COVID-19, um, you've, you've been joining me with mental health events and I've been introducing you with, with um, some people who've been um, reading about Cycredge. Um, of course, it's also not um, um, a secret, but um, Graham is my husband. So, but exactly, what, what do you do for Cypridge, Graham? Hi, well, um, well, for most of my life, I've worked in various uh, customer service, customer focused roles. Um, and I'm currently working in the railway industry, where I've been for the last 18 years, in fact. Um, for Cypridge, I, I do the basic uh, video editing required for the DRH show. Uh, and also, I do the basic editing needed for audio reads for the articles on Cypridge. Mm -hmm. I also produced um, one or two, two or three uh, audio reads myself um, for articles written by other people on Cypridge. So that's yes. basically what I do. And, uh, and of course, needless to say, um, after this um, panel talk, you'll be editing this one, of course. Yes, I'll have my work cut out editing this one too. Yeah, so let's make it easy for Greya. <laughs> Um, let's minimize um, what he has to edit. Now we'll move on with um, with Rona. Um, Rona, um, she's, she's quite involved with a number of platforms with Cypress because Cypress doesn't have just, um, it's not just a blog, but it also has um, a Cypress journal of psychology, which is like the, the academic, the scholarly um, arm of Cypress. And Rona is also involved in that. Um, so, so Rona, um, tell us about your journey in Cypress. Um, how did you start and what exactly is the nature of your role? 
Hi everyone. So what I do usually is to edit some of the articles that we publish in Cypress and also on um, the journal. We do usually edit based on our um, based on our format. So we started around five years ago. And aside from that, we also help Kuya Dennis on the different um, conferences that he handles. Thank you, Rona. And um, Sue, um, last but not the least, Sue, um, can you please tell us what exactly is your role? What, what does it entail? And how are you finding it so far? Yes, I'm finding it very interesting then. Um, most of the work is proofreading, uh, preparing news releases and guest posts for publication, uh, which sounds really simple. I mean, the basics are simple, but the details, they take a surprising amount of time to get right. And obviously, getting it right is very important for the website, which is what gets results and enables people from the world over to find what they need on our website. Um, I've also written the odd article uh, on subjects close to my heart. Uh, I've been all the other readings on the email parts. Yeah, thank you, Sue. So as you could probably tell, um, Sidecrash is not just a website, but it's actually a sort of um, a family enterprise. <laughs> so uh, Rona is actually my sister. Um, Graham is my husband. Um, Dina is my is a younger sister, and Sue is my sister-in-law. But even so, I, I think we have kind of um, um, a, a personal investment because all of us, in one way or another, we have a sort of a personal stake when it comes to mental health and wellness. So I'd be delighted to hear from each one of you what's your sort of a personal ethos what's your personal advocacy when it comes to promoting um personal mental health and well-being i suppose we'll start with with graham um what, what's your personal stake when it comes to um mental health and wellness um i, I don't want to be i don't want to sound graphic but um you mentioned that you work in the railway in the railway industry and it's no secret really that in britain a lot of people die of suicide um, um, in, in, in the railway infrastructure. So how, how does that influence your um, take on mental health? Um, well, fortunately for me, thankfully, I've, I've never actually witnessed any um, suicides on the railway, although Yes, they do occur. We had one. We had one this year at the station I work at. Uh, thankfully, I wasn't there that day. It was. It was indeed quite gruesome. I'm, I'm, uh, an individual with mental health um, issues um, tried to end his life. Um, fortunately, he failed. But it. Um, and he's, he's, he is. He's, he's making a recovery. But it's left him with life-changing injuries. Um, not to mention the effect that it's had on my colleagues who had to deal with it. Um, I know that certainly one of my colleagues was quite quite seriously traumatised and had to have a couple of weeks off afterwards. Uh, the driver of the train himself, to my knowledge, hasn't returned to work yet. Uh, and this was back in, I think, February. So these sort of things can have a huge effect on not just one individual, but a a whole number of individuals it's um it can be quite unpleasant mm -hmm. so Absolutely. you know sharing the message of improving mental health and mm -hmm. um you know being happy in your life is is an important message to me mm -hmm. and, and and obviously um because 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 your role with with um with Cycrage actually involves editing videos and and i'm quite sure that you would agree with me that um because oh, we're, we're trying to spread awareness about mental health in in one shape or form um it actually helps pe people um, manage their mental health um just so you know they, they don't go that road of you know i'm um, dying of suicide um we understand that this is quite um, a sensitive topic so if, if any one of you gets um distress or is affected by this topic um we do encourage you to seek um um the help of a mental health professional now um i i'd like to hear from um um my sisters um rona and dina um which are both from the philippines 
Um, so would you say that, um, how, how would you describe the mental health landscape in the Philippines, especially um, both of you are teachers um, in, in Philippines. Um, Ron, I understand that you're a college lecturer. And Dina, I understand that you're a high school teacher. So it, predominantly you work, you're working with young people and these are very you know, challenging period of your life. Um, you, you've been um, young people at one point in your life. So how would you um, sort of describe the, the mental health landscape in the Philippines and how does that kind of shape the way you approach your work um, within Cypress? So let's hear it from Rana first. Okay. Um, before in the Philippines, talking about mental health and one's wellness was once a taboo. But actually now we have an open avenue to discuss about this as you have mentioned dealing with younger generation or younger than our age majority of them especially now that we are on in pandemic they are they are experiencing depression majority of them are ex, are experiencing anxiety and being their lecturer to, to this young people we wanted to share more on the positive side of life. That's why when when connecting to my task on Cyprus, I really wanted to to read articles, to proofread articles, because these articles has have something to to do on my part, and can I can share it to my students. Although the Filipino cultures, the Filipino culture, we don't actually share the things that we feel but if they will be reading articles if you know where they are coming from definitely these students will share to you their feelings and their emotion and on that means we can help these young people to think ahead of their wellness rather than on what they are actually doing in life so they have um they will be looking forward for positivity in life and that is what I like more, reading articles about psychology and wellness and affecting the lives of my students as well. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, um, we, we try to provide evidence base, um, evidence, an evidence base with um, what we do in Cypress. That's, that's why we have um, Cypress Journal of Psychology. And um, I understand even though your background is not in psychology, but because you're an academic, um, you also try to make sure that whatever we publish on Cypress is of um, rigorous academic standard. Um, would you say so? Yes, and definitely uh, having a platform like an, an open journal that will cater different writers, different authors, and of course, different readers. It gives you an academic uh, freedom to express yourself at the same time through, uh, through written output, they can also express themselves. It is uh, targeting two things. You have the written output and, of course, combining the um, academics. You put there or you combine there your knowledge of the written output and expressing yourselves. Both two are really needed for, for education and for young people. And we use this. We can actually use this. Uh, this is this is our guide in in dealing or in teaching young people. Uh, absolutely, thank you for sharing your your experience and what you think about the mental health um, situation in the Philippines. Now um, we'll we'll move on to Dina, who's our actually a social media manager. Um, I'm just interested to hear about Dina's opinion about, do you think um, social media has really an important role when it comes to spreading awareness about mental health? Um, I, I think it's not just, you know, it's not just Twitter or Facebook. There's certain um, social media platforms that we don't use, such as Instagram or, or TikTok. Um, as someone who interacts with young people, do you think that this should be an avenue that Cycred should, you know, um, try to try to explore? Should, should we should we have a TikTok account? Should we have an Instagram account? What's what's your take on that? Um, let's hear it from a social media manager. Oh yes, actually, being working with teenagers, they are so vulnerable. They are so sensitive at the moment, especially during this pandemic. So, their only 
avenue to share their thoughts are via social media sites. Especially here, TikTok is very popular. All they want to do is share what they're doing and what they feel. So they say they go to Facebook, they go to Twitter, they go to to TikTok, to Instagram, and some of them are doing their vlogs just to just to release whatever they are thinking. So that's what I that's what I see and what I observe on my students. So that's the only thing that they can do at the moment since they're yeah. Oh, most of them experiencing um, mental challenging during this mm. pandemic. They don't know what to do. They are being caged here. Mm. No, that so that's I think that this is the help of social media sites during mm. this pandemic. That's the only world at yeah. the moment. Yeah, I, I I would go along with what you said because I'm um, gr growing up when 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 I was um on my teenage years, there was no social media back then, and it was kind of like really a different a different world, you know. Like um, if if you wanna share something, um, if you have an opinion on certain things, um, be it politics or be it mental health, you just kind of keep it to yourself. And I think because of um the, the presence of social media, like what you've said, um, there's more freedom, there's more form of kind of you know liberation um when when it comes to you know talking about important things, not just about mental health, but you know any anything that actually affects the, their lives. Um, I'll, I'll get back to to Dina and and Rona later. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about. Um, what's been going on in the Philippines in lockdown um, and how it has affected the mental health of young people. But thank you, Dina, for sharing your thoughts about um, um, social media and how it ties in with what we do in Cybridge, um, especially we're trying to spread awareness about mental health and wellness. Thank you. Now, so um, I, I want to bring in Sue. Um, Sue is actually, she's doing a fantastic job of writing um, um, articles that could be a source of positivity. And she's also doing a, a number of audio reads. Um, there's, there's a common theme that um, if you read Sue's article, there's a common theme. She's, she's trying to you know, like promote um, positivity and wellness. Let's say, for instance, um, walking or having a dog or or having children. So I was just interested, Sue, how do you actually um, come up with these ideas about um, looking after yourself, um, 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 implementing self-care? Is this really something that you, you, you take seriously on a personal level? Yes, then, absolutely. All these things are vitally important in general life. Um, but there are things, there are subjects that are close to my heart. Um, walking the dog getting out, walking, going over the allotment, um, self-care, positivity. It can only help. It can't harm you. Um, none of what I talk about, it, it can harm you. I'm sure to putting your back out over the allotment uh, or slipping while you're out walking. It's all the mental side. It's the getting out in the open air, the freshness of being outside. Um, it's all positive. Um, there's very little negativity about it. Even mm -hmm. going out in the rain, it's mm -hmm. still a positive experience. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. And it's, it's not just, you know, because sometimes it's easy to get into um, um, that, that negative narrative that when we talk about mental health, it's all sad and it's all gloomy. So we try to balance what we publish in Cyprus, just like what you've said, it can't really do you you harm. And and one thing that I'd really um, like to comment is she's really doing a fantastic job um, about um, doing an audio read. And um, so, some of you might not be aware the reason why we do audio read is because it's, it's um, we're getting some requests from our readers that um, some of them have reading difficulties, and so um, they kind of request like an audio format of, of these articles that we publish in Cycridge. So uh, I'm just interested, Sue, because um, you, you've you've done a number of audio reads for us. Uh, how are you finding uh, How are you finding the process? Is it is it difficult? Because I would I tried doing it once and I sort of stutter. So if you could just share to our um, share to our audience that there's actually a lot of work involved and so they get to appreciate more what, what, what you do for us. Yes, well, obviously Graham edits the audio reads that I do. Um, but uh, yes, there's a little bit of work involved. I mean, you have to read the article. Quite often I'll read it and think, oh, that doesn't sound right. I might have to make a correction, just a detail, but it changes the phrasing. 
Um, and also when you're reading it through, the door opens behind you, the dog barks, all these little details, you might have to start again or you just might have to start a new sentence. Mm -hmm. It creates more work for Graham as well because obviously he's uh, doing the, mm. um, the back office on that. Uh, but you have to get a flow on it and you have to understand or try to understand the whole mm -hmm. subject that you're reading. It, sometimes it's sometimes it can be difficult, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially like if, you, if you're um, giving voice to, to, to an article, because um, yeah, just like what I've said earlier, so some people, people just are more convenient listening to an article. And um, uh, we, we can actually see from, from the number of views on YouTube that actually a lot of people appreciate um, that kind of format. So thank you, Sue, for, for the kind of work that you do. And um, I, I'm also interested, so, because um, you, you've been writing a lot of articles about allotment. Do you keep allotment yourself? Of course, I, I do know whether you keep allotment yourself, but for the benefit of um, the audience, um, um, do you keep an allotment yourself? And do you, you actually own a dog? And you do allow yeah. walking. Absolutely. Yes, most of these subjects are close to my heart. I do them all. Um, it, this is why I find it difficult to find a good subject to actually write about. Um, it's got to be something that means something to me as a person in my life. And I find it difficult to find a good subject and to write about it. Um, and if it's a subject I don't know, I can't write about it. it, yeah. it it's writing about uh, mental health on itself I would find that impossible but writing about um, say allotments or owning a dog and the mental health benefits that it brings to you that I can write about yeah th thank you Sue now um, we'll um, hear it from um, Graham um, of course, Graham, you, you, you kind of touch a very sensitive topic um, about suicide earlier. So I just want to um, ask you something light. So, um, so, so give us a quick snapshot of what it actually involves um, when, when it comes to editing. Is it, is it really difficult to edit? Um, um, how, how, does, how does it go? Um, um, well... I mean, hopefully, as my job as editor, if, if I do my job well editing, for example, a DRH show, then people hopefully won't even notice what, I'm, what I've done. Um, I, my job is to try and edit out any mistakes or pieces that need to be removed, um, but which I try and do as carefully and, and seamlessly as possible so that anyone watching the episode hopefully won't even know that anything has actually been cut out. Um, that's not always possible, but it, it's what I try to achieve. Um, and if I, as I say, if I can do that well enough, then by doing it well enough, it won't distract people watching mm -hmm. from the, the content or message of the episode that they're seeing. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what I try and achieve. Okay. And of course, Graham, this is already the hundredth episode of Sightgrage, so you've been editing videos for over a year, so you've seen loads of videos and um, what while you're doing um your editing is there is there one episode that really you know strikes you is there one that that's memorable um from an editing point of view i'm sure this one will be quite memorable but um no as one of the best and most interesting episodes um that i've watched uh, and i made a point of watching it all the way through after i'd edited it um, was um, the interview with uh, Debbie Hayton, which I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of people also found that very interesting, especially if you read the comments and the number of dislikes. Mm -hmm. And if I could just share, I had lots of not so um, welcoming comments. Um, so if, if you're listening, um, do do watch out. If you're listening or watching, um, do do spend some time watching um, my interview with Debbie Hayton. But sorry to interrupt you, Graham. Um, carry on with what you're saying. No, no, that, that's um, that, that's pretty much it. Um, although, actually, I have to ask, since since you give me the opportunity, um, what else is in the pipeline for Sightbridge, and in particular for the DRH show? What do you have? Oh, um, um, well, we do have some amazing stuff. Um, 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 in the pipeline for Sightgrage, um, like what I've mentioned earlier, there's ICPCE, um, um, which is the, the virtual conference of Sightgrage. 
Um, I'll, I'll be posting the link, um, but um, uh, we'll, we'll save that. We'll save that for later. Um, I, I just want to go back to Rona and Dina, um, and we'll, we'll talk more about um, the the lockdown and it has how it has affected mental health. But thank you for bringing that up, um, Graham. Um, I'll talk more about ICPCE and what else is in the pipeline for Psychreg. Thank you. So, um, Rona and Dean, I just want to go back to you because I think this is an, an important topic that we have to touch upon because you're both teachers um, in, in the Philippines, and I'm sure that you've, um, I'm sure you would agree with me that it's not uh, an exaggeration to say that um, the lockdown has really imposed a lot of, you know, deleterious effect with um, not just adolescents' mental health, but um, everyone's mental health in general but how are you coping as teachers in philippines and um how has your role in psychreg helped you with you know um the, the way you approach your work especially you know working from home it's not really like embedded with the way you you, you would usually teach in at, at school so um can, can, can you share some of your insights yeah it is actually the first year anniversary of the lockdown in the Philippines. Well, uh, on my case, since I am not working from home, we have to report to work every day, despite of the different lockdowns implemented by the government. Yes, you're correct that the mental health is not just for young people, adolescents but of course it affects majority of the filipinos whatever the age level is so definitely working in psychiatry or doing different um proofreading articles will actually boost my confidence in terms of um editing and also it helps me to it somehow forces me to read articles and reading articles enlightens my thoughts enlightens my mental health the same manner that i can also share the ideas to my colleagues and to share the ideas also to my students students are affected here majority of the students are really affected because uh, some don't have a good internet connection and they are overwhelmed with the number of academic things and academic requirements to comply on. Uh, working class like us are also affected because there are a number of companies that are closing because of the lockdown and we can't really travel. That, that's one of the things. And that's why I like writing articles about traveling. I like writing articles about our relationship with colleagues because on, on that sense, I can express myself and i can share it and i can tell them that after this lockdown we can go out and travel and after this lockdown or whether we still have lockdown we should have good relationship with our with our colleagues we should develop good relationship with them whether there is or no lockdown at all uh, absolutely. And now let's hear it from from um, Dina, because you, you've been teaching, um, especially, you know, um, adolescents. Um, how has your approach been affected because of the lockdown? And um, did you find more time to do your um, social media work for Psychreg? Um, actually, being uh, in a year with community lockdown, is it is tiring. So as for my work as a teacher, we do modular uh, approach for the student but at the moment I am working from home actually before this interview I've done my work so I record the students output I check it via Google Classroom so that's what I do today but actually it's hard to adjust from the face-to-face -to, -face to this online classes it's hard especially I am teaching in public school and most of the students do not have their internet, do not have their gadgets enough for them to learn. So this, this modular, is, this online is not for everybody. So that added to their anxiety to learn. So what will happen to them after this? Are they capable of learning? So are we mm -hmm. after the learning or af after, the, after the completion for just the requirements? So that's what we are facing today so mm. that's that's my opinion for this lockdown this pandemic that's what it teaches us 
how to be resilient. So that was most Filipino known for being resilient. So yes. what this resiliency will bring us, where this resiliency will bring us Filipinos. Yes. And so I'm, when... I'm... <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's that's a very comforting message, Dina. And thank you for reminding us the value of resilience. And and speaking of resilience, um, this actually ties in with what with what um Graham um asked me earlier with what's um in store for Psychridge. Um this coming um October, we're actually um hosting um an online conference, and the theme of that conference is um resilience. And um, like what I've mentioned earlier, I'll be posting um, the, the link to um, ICPCE so every everyone can join. I think that's something that we have to, you know, um, kind of um, the, the positive side of lockdown is because it, it enabled us to do a lot of things online. Um, we wouldn't normally do ICPCE online. We'd rather have um, a physical conference, a live conference, but um, I, I suppose by doing this online, it opens door. But um, j just to go back to what Ron um, Dina said earlier, um, re resilience is really big this year. It's a personal construct that we, we want to try to promote in Cypress. So we're hosting um, um, a conference all about resilience. Um, and um, I, I'd just like to take this opportunity to um, um, to hear from you. What's your message for um, Cypress Cy readers? Um, let's hear it from Sue. Um, well, message for readers, um, it may not be the only independent website out there, it may not be the biggest or best, but it's a good one. Mm -hmm. It's got articles and posts from people in many walks of life, their stories and understanding can mm -hmm. make the world a better place. If we can help people to understand their own minds, their own bodies, mm -hmm. why this or that happens, why it affects them so deeply, Maybe mm -hmm. we can help them understand that they need to get help. Mm -hmm. It may not get better without help. So um, if we can help people just by publishing stories um, about their own experiences, then surely that's positive. Okay. If it can Thank make you. people feel better, getting help when they need it, and then maybe sharing their own stories will mm -hmm. help more people. Yeah, thank you. And and uh, what, what you actually said, Sue, um, really resonates with, with me and I suppose with the rest of the Sidebridge team that we're not really, I know it's really like a saturated market what we're, we're in. You know, there's so many psychology websites, there's so many mental health websites, but um, we're not really trying to be big. We're just trying to, you know, carve out, you know, what we can contribute when it comes to promoting positivity, um, especially not now during lockdown, we really need a good dose of positivity. So th thank you for, for reminding us about um, our role, um, Sue. Um, let's hear it from Graham. So what what's your message to the Cypress readers or to anyone who's watching the DRH show? Oh, uh, well, you know, it's, I mean, it's great to be part of the Cypridge team. And um, I'm very grateful to the people who comment, leave comments uh, on the DRO show. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please click on the subscribe button and watch out for future exciting episodes. Yes, please do. Um, it, it really helps a lot if you leave comments and if you subscribe to our, our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on um, exciting episodes, especially this one, of course. Um, Dina, um, can you can you um, give us any message um, for, for Cypress readers, especially for those who are following us on, on social media platforms? Uh, yes, um, being a writer, as one of the writers of the website Cypress, I also feel reading some of the articles that what I feel is normal that I that mm -hmm. I am not alone what I'm feeling during this pandemic. So mm -hmm. it's it is relatable. Most of the articles are relatable. So it will serve you as a support system, an online mm -hmm. support system and mm -hmm. if you cannot talk to someone, so just read and you will feel whatever you're feeling today, right now, it is normal and it is valid. So come on, go to the website yeah. and read some articles. It's good. Yeah, thank you. Um, a lot of Dina's articles are actually um, coming from her own experience. Um, she wrote something about acne, because um, I understand you had some breakout <laughs> recently. And she also wrote about body positivity. And I think um, Dina is really um, 
um, um, attached to, to that topic. Um, but um, again, um, from a social media standpoint, um, do follow us on, on, on Facebook, do follow us on Twitter and on LinkedIn. I'll, I'll put the link on the description box. Um, so if you haven't done yet, um, um, just, just follow us on social media. Um, you, you can see um, um, my beautiful sister who's behind um, all those social media platforms. Um, now let's hear it from, from Rona. Um, Yes, you, you, you're all over the place um, uh, when it comes to SiteGrad. You're, you're involved with um, the blog, and with, you're also involved with the conference and, and the SiteGrad Journal of Psychology. So what's the big message, Rona? Okay, for, for our readers and for those who, for our subscribers, we encourage you to continue reading. There is really a wide array of topics of psychology, wellness, and well-being. As what they say, you are not alone for this one. Mm -hmm. And try to enlighten not just yourself, but try to also to share the enlightenment of psychology and understanding it by reading our articles. Share it and be one of us also. You may share your, your articles because mm -hmm. we can be we can be heard through writing. Yeah, thank you. And um, lastly, because I've been asking you um, questions, are there any questions you've got for me? Um, I'm, I'm happy to take in any questions. How long do I have to edit this show? <laughs> How long do you have to edit this show? Well, there's really not much to edit because um, 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 we've been quite genuine and spontaneous with our responses. Um, so it will be an easy work for you. Oh, and I won't edit that out. <laughs> um, any other questions? How, how okay, do you enjoy Rana, working with us? Sorry. How, how do you enjoy working with us? I, I, do you I really, really enjoy working with us? Yeah, I do enjoy working with you because, um, like what I've said, um, it's really um, um, a family enterprise. Uh, we're not just simply running a business. Of course, it's not really a secret that we earn from ads and other sponsored content. Um, th there's really a personal relationship within us. And just like what you've said earlier, um, we all have, in one way or another, we all have personal stake um, when it comes to promoting positivity, um, mental health and, and well-being. Um, just a quick question then, Ben. Um, what about upcoming developments with Blackbridge? Anything new on the horizon? Yes, um, th thank you for asking that lovely question, Sue. So there are exciting developments um, with SiteGridge. Um, I've already mentioned it several times earlier. There's an upcoming um, online conference where everyone who's watching this or listening to this are invited to join. Um, you can send us a, an abstract um, so you can present your paper relating to um, resilience. Another exciting development um, with SiteGridge is that there's, um, um, I don't want to announce it preemptively, but there's some exciting development with Sacred Journal of Psychology. Um, our issue is um, from being published next month on um, the June 2021 issue. And we do have some um, interesting articles that you can read. And that we also have a special issue with mental health on December 2021, which will be um, guest edited by Dr. Elizabeth Braithwaite. Um, you can still send some su some submissions for Cyprus Journal of Psychology. Um, our submission is all year round, and um, I think we are very we are one of the rare um, um, open access journal which all, also do not charge any fee. So we don't have any fee at all to to publish on on Cyprus Journal of Psychology. So that's those are the exciting developments. And just to add to um, Cyprus Journal of Psychology. Um, anyone who's presenting at um, ICPC 2021, um, they, their abstract will be um, published as part of a conference proceeding for the March 2021 issue. And um, I think um, another exciting development is that, um, well, we, I, I think I'll, I'll take this as an opportunity to share how proud we are that we have been given a number of awards. Um, um, I, I don't want to sound so, you know, like, like I'm showing off, um, but you can actually visit our website on the About section and we could, you could see how many people have given us an award. And on behalf of the Psychridge team, we're really humbled and honoured that, that you recognise the kind of work that we do. Because um, 
you can hear from the rest of the team from Rona, Dina, Graham and Sue, it's a lot of work. Um, I, I'll say it on behalf of, of, of Rona and Sue who's reading um, the, um, who's actually proofreading the articles. You might just be reading a five minute or seven minute worth of article, but there's actually a lot of work involved there um, behind the scenes, um, you know, like proofreading it and making sure that the formatting is right. So yeah, that, that's one thing that we're we, um, really excited about and um, hopefully um, we get to um, foster more collaboration with other um, mental health um, organizations. Um, yeah, so is, is there anything else that you'd like to ask me before we wrap this up? Now, so... Um, um, <laughs> sorry. When is this going to be done? Oh, um, um, about um, the Cyprus Journal of Psychology. No, I mean this, this uh, video. Oh, the video. Um, this will be published tonight, depending on Graham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, Graham has got to go to work in about an hour. Anyway, if you haven't got any more questions, it's really lovely talking to you, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to kind of like hear your thoughts about um, your your work in Cyprus. And also, I think a lot of um, readers um, would be interested to you know to see to see you um, share um, how you approach your work um, with, with Cyprus. So, thank you so much for um, sparing um, a chunk of your time today. Um, thank you, Rona. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Sue. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I really love to hear more about your thoughts, but unfortunately, our time is up. Thank you for joining me here on the DRH show. And um, like what everyone else said, um, do visit um, our platform, um, be it the blog, the journal, the conference, and of course, um, our social media platforms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.